and welcome to this week's YouTube video. As a working artist, I find having income streams I can depend on is really important. So today I wanted to talk about making money from your artwork by selling prints. Why make prints of your artwork? If you are an artist that produces physical work, like paintings, like me, you'll probably find that they are time consuming. I can only do one at a time, and whilst they are priced accordingly, these prices can make it prohibitive for people to buy your work. One-offs are expensive, and they should be. But a higher price creates a smaller customer selling base. A smaller customer base means more effort on the artist to get their work in front of their customer. You have to work harder to find them. Creating prints from your artwork is a great way to make additional income and appeal to a wider audience because it makes your art more affordable. What are the different ways you can make prints from your work? The two traditional methods are scanning your work or taking photos. Very often, up-to-date printers come with built-in scanners. If your artwork is small enough, you may be able to scan the work using a regular printer. Although you may experience colour shifts in these scanned images, especially for coloured artwork. If you are experienced with Photoshop, you may be able to improve the image by adjusting the colours within this program. The second option is to photograph your own work. You will need an entry level DSLR camera though, and setup is very important. The camera will need to be fixed onto a tripod so that it is steady. Holding the camera will result in photos that are a bit blurry, so use a tripod to create stability. Make sure that the room where you are taking the photos has good, even, soft lighting, and place the artwork on an easel. Always place the artwork landscape up as the top area will receive more light than the bottom area. By placing the artwork landscape way up, you will help to reduce this issue. If the artwork is an oil painting, make sure all the dull areas are removed by oiling out your painting. Do not zoom in on the camera, just move the camera plus tripod nearer the image. I am not a photographer and so cannot really give any recommendations as to the settings within the actual camera. Whenever I have attempted this method myself, I have always opted for the auto function. You may find you still need to do a little adjusting to the image in Photoshop. However, bear in mind that the maximum size of JPEG this type of camera will give you. For fine art prints, JPEGs need to be printed at 300 dpi. Anything smaller will pixelate. A standard DSLR will give you an image for print of about A4 size at 300 dpi. So if you want to be able to offer larger prints, then you may need to use a professional fine art photographer. I used a professional photographer for my prints for many years and found this was definitely the best solution for me at the time. It takes the hassle out of having to do it yourself, plus all the colour matching to the original painting will be done by the fine art photographer and you will receive a high quality image that can be printed to a large size. However, this method is expensive. I found each painting was between 75 to 100 pounds to be photographed and this did not include the prints. If you decide to use this method, it is worth remembering that it is unlikely that you will know whether your artwork will be popular and sell well, so it can be quite a big outlay when you have not tested your product to your audience. I have found as an artist there is no magic formula for knowing if something will sell well. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. The only way to know is to put them out there and see. Social media can give you a little bit of a head start on this, but the items that have been popular in my Etsy shop have not been popular on my social media channels. I have found the best way to produce artwork for prints is to do the artwork digitally. I started doing some painting in Procreate maybe 18 months ago and I was surprised at how painterly an effect you can get. 
If you are not familiar with this program, have a look at some of these videos on my channel. All the artwork in these videos have been done in Procreate. The advantages to this app are, all you need is an iPad and a pencil tool and you are ready to go. Artwork can be done very large. So a one meter by one meter print is easily possible. You will be able to export a JPEG, TIFF, PNG, etc. at 300 DPI from this program. This is then print ready. I have experimented with lots of different printing methods. I have used both print ready companies that offer Zhikli printing and specialist fine art Zhikli printing firms too. For print ready firms, prints get cheaper the more you do. So bear in mind you may need to do at least 10 of one image to make it cost effective. You will find that the same JPEG file will print differently depending upon the printer and the paper. Therefore, it is always a good idea to do a test print first. This is often not possible with a print ready firm. Very often, specialist fine art printing firms will do small print runs at a reasonable price and they will allow you to do one offs at a reasonable cost too. Another option is to purchase your own fine art Shickley printer. There are a good number of desktop Shickley printers available that all give good results. You should consider before purchasing a printer whether you are able to make the cost of the equipment back relatively easily in your sales. If not, this may not be such a cost effective solution. Desktop printers can print up to A2 size if you purchase an additional roll feeder. You will also need to buy an additional set of inks with the printer because a lot of the ink is used in the setup process. The cost of a full set of inks is around £300. It is also helpful to have access to a program like Photoshop and use it as your print manager for controlling your colour output. The benefits of purchasing your own printer is that it will greatly reduce your actual costs and increase your margin of profit per print. You will be able to print on demand and test new designs without having to invest in any print stock. The disadvantages are that it is quite a large upfront cost, so you need to be sure you will be able to make the printer cost back in your sales. It is important to factor in all your costs in the price you charge. This includes the actual cost of getting your work printed, any online selling platform fees, are you including free shipping, your shipping supplies, and lastly, your profit margin? Remember, as the creator of this artwork, ideally you should be making the most, unless you have taken the retail route, but I will speak about that later. So if you are not, you may want to rethink your pricing strategy. Have a look at what your competitors are selling their products for. Unless you are a well-known artist, there is usually a ceiling price you can charge for a print. If you are going to do signed limited editions, you can charge more than if it is just an open edition print run. It is important to know who your customer is. If you are a niche product, online you will have more of an advantage as you will have less competition. If you are trying to sell your prints online, there will naturally be more customers to sell to, even if you are in a niche. You just have to find your customers. How do you do this? If you have your own website, you can sell your prints on there. There are various ways you can build your own site, such as WooCommerce, Shopify, Wix, Squarespace. There are pros and cons with every platform. But in the end, you just need to choose what is right for you. There are additional costs associated with having your own website, such as platform fees, domain name fees and website hosting fees. If you are just starting out, this option may prove the least cost effective. It is also worth bearing in mind that you will have to generate your own traffic to your website as SEO will be minimal. You will therefore need a presence on social media. Building up an active, engaged audience can take time and effort. 
so it is always worth considering having an Etsy shop too. The benefits of Etsy is that there are no website costs associated with opening a shop. You can open a shop very quickly and have your prints listed in an afternoon. You will pay a small listing fee per item and then no fees are paid until you actually sell the item. Etsy also has a great organic search, but you will pay quite a hefty fee for this. If you are relying on Etsy's organic search to maximise your chances of your prints being purchased, you are best off having a good number of listings. You will need to make sure your SEO is optimised on all your listings. There are lots of videos on YouTube that can tell you how to do this and there are also free apps like eRank that can help you too. Etsy is a really great platform to test out new designs and artwork. If you have decided to do your own printing, you are producing your work digitally via an app like Procreate and are printing to order, there is very little that you need to do other than create the artwork. If the artwork is not popular, you can pull the listing and you have only spent the listing fee. By adopting this strategy, it is possible to try out a whole host of new work very cost effectively. Furthermore, it is possible to be a focused Etsy seller. By using platforms like eRank, you can analyse the top performing shops in your niche. You can also find out the tags they use and their most popular products. By implementing a similar strategy and producing work around subjects that you know are already selling well for another seller, this can increase your chances of making sales. One of the disadvantages of this method is that you will need to produce a lot of work over many categories that maybe you are not even interested in. Also, Etsy shops are very sensitive to economic downturns and you may find your income fluctuates depending upon how good economic factors are generally. If you decide to go down this route, it is really important to know your customer. If your artwork is in a niche, remember that physical footfall will always be less than online with targeted SEO. Being in a niche is not always an advantage when trying to sell in person because there are less people to sell to. You could try local trade shows or craft events. Usually there is a fee for hiring a stall. Remember that your time should be costed into the day when working out your profit margins. Your profit margins will be massively squeezed if you try this route. Smaller independent craft shops may take a lesser percentage of the sale price, but high street galleries tend to take 50% and many will only commit to sale or return. Honestly, I think this is a terrible deal for the artist and would not recommend a sale or return route, especially if the mounting and framing is covered by the artist. Usually the galleries are a framing service too. This is how they help drive their own profits. They may offer you a discount if you use their framing services, but just remember that as an artist you are helping to drive their profits by using these services with no onus on them to sell your work. I hope you have found today's video useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.